World War II Effa de Condo wheels. Operation Paperclip should be familiar with territory. For anyone else's name refers to the initiative launched by the United States at conclusion of the war. It was aimed to deny the other allied nations access to Jeremy's best and brightest scientists. In effect, that was one of them opening chapters of the Cold War that was to follow. For the most part, both Soviet Union and United Kingdom enact together their own initiatives aimed at up gathering up as many prompted scientists as possible. Primarily the fields of expertise and the most targets of Operation Paperclip and its and its contemporaries belong to those of those rockery and physics. In fact, perhaps the most famous bounty of the American search was Werner von Braun, also called the father of rocketry. With that being said, the experts from several different fields were sought even through the war criminals like the infamous leader of Japanese in Unit 731. Shiro Hishi offered humanity in exchange for their research. Ishii's case was far than usual with that several prompted dead researchers destined for Numberberg that they were num were also spared for prosecution for their actions. During the war in exchange for expertise, one such individual named Willem Storas, who was apprehended in August of 1945, Operatives of the American OSS apprehended Stratus of the borderline was that he was in the midst of the apparent escape from Allied occupied Germany, presumably to hide under South America like so many other figuratives. Posing as a manual laborer, Stratus was in fact a member of the Waffen SS, especially a captain within one of the most infamous Death Heads bridges responsible for the administration of rich numerous concentration camp concentration camps stratus was not apprehended alone however accompanying him were two men who apparently took carried all of his belongings both were to say the quote arresting officers report trusted up like a pack of mules and rode uh, opaque eye masks that he had an appearance and texture of lead the masks apparently back lacked any hose, which, of course, the weavers could see the manner which they were affected by the man's face wasn't immediately apparent. The pair failed to respond verbally to instructions from the OSS men present, although they apprehend Dossel throughout the encounter and eventually surrender without any incident once Stratus gave himself in the order to stand down. All three were brought in for questioning and further identification which at that point each identified as a member of the SS due to the presence of the distinctive blood type tattoo under each man's left arm. During this process, various bags and rucksacks that were been fastened by Stratus, companions were searched and weighed, and at that point was revealed that each man had been carrying in the access of 900 libs worth of gold bullion. In addition, Stratus himself was found himself wearing a scratch hole shoveled by paperwork and a cloth under belt containing several pouches worth of paper currency ranging from wrench marks to pounds of sterling to American dollars. During his initial detainment, Stratus agreed to cooperate with fervor to his captors, only on one condition that his companions to be allowed to continue to wear their mask in custody. A seemingly ingenious request the commanding officer present at his arrest agreed to the condition. Once spared into the individual cells for the purpose of interrogation, the two masked men failed to respond questioning to any attempts of to elect conversation at all. Instead, each one stood and faced with the eastern wall of all respective cells in approximately five hours despite the efforts of their captivers to make them sit or respond in any way whatsoever. During this time, Stratus was questioned as to the identities of his escorts, and how was that they were able to carry such tremendous weights without any apparent strain. He would only state that they were his personal assistants, and need of their separation from him was a tantamount to torture. In Crudulis, the Allied interrogators, 
persisted with their questions, while the two other men continued to remain fixed on the spot with their own cells. Eventually, the questioning of, of the trio was put on hold until each man was left in the cell overnight. The following morning, the two masked men were found sprawled out onto the floors of their rooms, each dead with no clue as to what caused their demise. When informed of this, Stratus Kant reacted with apathy, evading all further questions by asking his interrogators to refer to his notes. The papers found in the schedule were translated to by the OSS commander, who had apprehended Stratus. Soon after these documents were translated and circulated among the OSS, an order for Stratus transfer to a prison in the United States was assigned by Douglas MacArthur. The whereabouts of the two masks presumably extracted from the dead men was quickly lost and no mention of it is made any official documentation related to the incident beyond the initial re arrest report. Willem Stratus only appears twice in more than official records. After that point, one listed in personnel document dated April 6, 1954 from Las Alamos Laboratory as part of the passenger manifest for a USAF flight for bound Rio de Janeiro in Brazil of August of 1966.